Hey everybody, if you can believe it, January 2022 is right around the corner. And as excited as I am about 2022 coming, one of the reasons is because I think it's going to be another fantastic reading year. 2021 was amazing. Could 2022 be better? Today I'm here to tell you about five books coming out in January of 2022 that I need to make sure are on your TBR. So let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing today? As always, I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe. And of course, I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three or four. It is cold and wet and rainy and dark here in Northern California. We had a little bit of a respite today from the rain, but it has been pouring for a, over a week now. Um, the water is everywhere. I know that there's a lot of snow north of me in the Pacific Northwest. So it is definitely winter time, which is good because that means there's absolutely no reason not to be reading. And today I'm here to talk about how excited I am about the 2022 reading year. 2021 has been fantastic. To be honest with you, I am having the most difficult time figuring out what the heck my top 10 is going to look like. I I can't even. There, It's like every time I cross a book off the list, I'm like, I feel like I've gotten rid of someone. So, um, personal and friendly, and I don't want to do it. So if I could have a top 27,000, that would be great. Thank you. But today I'm here to start 2022, and I have to tell you, you're going to want to read all of these books. So get out your pen, your paper, your Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able, I highly recommend getting these from your local independent bookstores. Pre-orders help the authors, help the bookstores, and they help you get books in your hands as soon as possible. If you're a library user, make sure your library has ordered a copy or two so that you can have them as soon as they come out. So the first book that we're going to talk about today is probably one of the most anticipated and talked about books of 2022 for many reasons, and that is To Paradise by Hana Yanagihara. Now, I am uh, not, to, not going to be able to walk away without talking a little bit about A Little Life. That book was ginormous when it came out. It was polarizing. People loved it. People hated it. But people talked about it forever because it was amazing. I loved that book. I often call it the best book I've ever read that I will never read again. I also loved People in the Trees, which was her first book. Um, so I'm a huge fan. Now, this book is going to be one of those books that people are talking about regardless. People are already talking about the book, and it hasn't even come out yet. So what is To Paradise? It's actually a book told in three different stories. The first one is set in the 1893 America. New York is a free state. It's an alternate version of our reality. And you can, uh, people can, uh, marry and love whoever they wish in this version of reality. Or so it seems, the back tells us. So we have a fragile young man from a wealthy, distinguished family that is really sort of going against the, uh, the family has set up um, a marriage for him and he does not want it. He is enamored and infatuated with a young music teacher, but that music teacher has no means. The other story is set in 1993 Manhattan during the AIDS pandemic or epidemic. Um, uh, we have a young Hawaiian man who is trying to hide his past from his much older, much wealthier partner. And then we have a futuristic section told in 2093, the world has been devastated by plague and is run by a totalitarian government. We have a young woman who is the granddaughter of a very famous scientist, and she is dealing with navigating life now that he is gone. But she is also searching for the answers to the mysterious disappearance of her husband. I trust that Hannah Yanagahara is going to bring all of that together for us. Um, I love her. I think that uh, she's a fantastic writer, and I cannot wait to see what she does. I also think if you didn't like A Little Life, you may want to read this one just to be able to be in the conversation, because that's half the fun about books, right? To have those conversations, have those disagreements. And, you know, maybe this will be the one that you absolutely love. So this is To Paradise by Hanigana coming out from Doubleday on January 11th, 2022. 
Okay, next up is a book in this pile that I've actually read already, and that is The Amazing Honor by uh, Thriti Umragar, and this is out from Algonquin Books also on January 11th, 2022. Now, Honor is the tor uh, is the story of Smitha. She is a young Indian woman. She is a tra traveling journalist. Um, she and her family uh, uh, were from India, but they wound up moving to America when she was in her early teens. Um, she has been asked to return to India because a friend of hers, who is also a journalist, has had an accident and needs a surgery. Now, she's thinking she's coming back in order to take care of her friend, but really her friend wants her to take over a story that she has been writing. And she meets, uh, Smitha meets her friend's uh, friends, uh, people that are in her circle, and then hears about this story. And it's the story of a young woman who she and her husband were um, set on fire by her brothers because um, one of uh, the, 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 in the, in the couple, one was Hindu and was one was Muslim. And they got married at sort of uh, the families were not happy and the brothers set them on fire, but she did not die. The husband did not die. The husband died. She did not die. And she was pregnant and she had a daughter and she decided to sue her brothers for what they have done. And this is going through the Indian court system. I hope that that made sense because that was a lot. So Smita meets her and they create this relationship. And Smita also has to come to terms, right, with why her family left India and her thoughts and her feelings about the culture, about the religious divide, um, about how women are treated and looked upon. And all of that is told in a page turner of a book. And these people are so real and so genuine to their story and also this book is heartbreaking and powerful and hopeful in some ways and everything you need in a book that you just want to sit down and read so that's honor by thriti umragar out umragar out on january 11th 2022 from algonquin books Okay, the next book I'm going to tell you about is Perpetual West, also out from Algonquin Books. This one comes out on January 25th by Misha Mirren. Now, Misha Mirren wrote Sugar Run, which was around a bit a couple of years ago. You may remember that book. But this one is told, I don't know if I know when. Nope. Okay, so this is the story of Alex and Elena. They have moved from small town Virginia to El Paso, Texas, and they are newly married. Now, we find out very early on that Alex is uh, was born in Mexico and adopted by American Pentecostal parents and raised here. And once he gets back to El Paso, he dives in. He wants to, he goes across into Juarez. He wants to learn the, about the people, about the culture. He wants to improve his Spanish. And he is devoted to that. Elena gets there and she struggles with being in school. She struggles with her focus. And she does not realize that Alex has fallen in love with Mateo, who is a Lucha Libre fighter. And one day he disappears. And she doesn't know if he disappeared on his own volition or if he has been kidnapped. And she wants to know, she has to know, in order to know where, what to do and where to go next. Um, that is Perpetual West by Misha Marin, out from Algonquin Books on January 25th, 2022. Okay. Um, two more, and if I haven't, if you haven't added these three already, you're going to add these two, and then go back and add the other three. Promise? The next book I want to tell you about is The High House by Jesse Greengrass. The, this one is coming out, actually, this is the first uh, one of the, in the first week of the month on January 4th, 2022. This is the story of two siblings, Caro and her brother, half-brother Polly. They arrive at the high house after her father and stepmother have been killed in a some sort of climate change accident. They get there and the house is being taken care of by Grandy and his daughter Sally. And the two pairs have to learn together, so learn to live together. Um, however, there are limits. There are limits to the resources. There's limits to their safety, and, you know, there's limits to what Grandy can teach these children 
um, as his health starts to fail. So this book deals with family, it deals with survival, it deals with um, parenthood, it deals with the family you make, the family you have, all of that kind of stuff. I think it sounds fantastic. Now, Jessie Greengrass needs no introduction. Her book, Sight, was shortlisted for the Women's Prize a few years ago. Um, and um, I'm super excited for this one. I think it sounds fantastic. So that's The High House by Jesse Greengrass out from uh, Scribner on January 4th, 2022. Last but not least is actually a book that just arrived yesterday. Um, and when I read the blurb, I was like, can I stop doing what I'm doing now and read this book? And that is The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan. This is out from Simon & Schuster, also on January 4th. So this comes out next week, people. That's January 4th, if you can believe that. Um, this is the story of Frida Liu. Now, it says here, she doesn't have a career worthy of her Chinese immigrant parents' sacrifices. She can't persuade her husband, Gus, to give up his wellness-obsessed young mistress. Only with Harriet. Their um, daughter does Frida finally attain the perfection expected of her. Harriet may be all she has, but she is just enough. Until Frida has a very bad day. The state has its eyes on mother like, mothers like Frida. The ones who check their phones, letting their children get injured on the playground. Who let their children walk home alone. Because of one moment of poor judgment, a host of government officials will now determine if Frida is a candidate for a big brother-like institution that measures the success or failures of a mother's devotion. Faced with the possibility of losing Harriet, Frida must prove that a bad mother can be redeemed, that she can learn to be good. I have to be honest with you, this book sounds terrifying to me, but it also sounds powerful and timely in a lot of ways. Um, so that's the good, uh, the School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan, out from uh, Simon and Schuster on January fourth, two thousand twenty-two. So I think this is a pretty eclectic stack of books, if I do say so myself. Oh, I'm dropping one there. Let's see if I can hold that up there for you. I hope every single one of them winds up on your TBR, and I hope we read them together and we love them together and we talk about them because there's lots to talk about. As always, if you are a return subscriber to this channel, I could not do this without you. Thank you so very, very much. If you are new to my channel, I have to say welcome. I hope you subscribe. I hope you click the bell. I hope you come back more for talking. me talking. I talk about books. I love it. I love it. So as always, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye, everybody.